What happens if you do 30 minutes of cardio per day, 30 days, in 30 different ways? I did exactly that in one of my many self experiments. And as both a former competitive athlete and now a guy far more focused on looking and feeling good for the long haul, I have a lot to share on lifestyle cardio, as well as what it takes to build an elite cardio engine. I'm a strong advocate for doing cardio several days a week. Building your cardiovascular endurance and capacity can have a host of benefits from health to performance and aesthetics. Some specific results I had from my 30-day experiment were, I processed nutrients much better from my diet. I improved my recovery time between training sessions. I improved my sleep quality. Furthermore, I arrived at a foundational functional bodybuilding recipe for cardio. All you need are three characteristics for your training to be most effective. The first, it must be sustainable. Within a given time domain, you can complete the task in a consistent and repeatable effort without a significant decline in your performance. For example, all 10 sets of your cardio intervals were completed within five to 10 seconds of one another, never slowing down or speeding up by more than five seconds. Number two, low complexity. How difficult a particular movement or training format is for you to complete. We must account for your motor control, which is a brain activity, and your contractile capacity, which is more of your muscles and joints. For example, you choose to do all your cardio sets on a simple tool like the assault bike, and you opt for 1,000 meter repeat intervals rather than doing something more complicated, a Metcon, that would involve 21, 15, 12, 9, 6 reps of box jumps and snatches. And third, cyclical. Methods that occur in cycles and are typically more simple and lower in muscle tension. These are tools to help you learn how to coordinate your muscles, heart, and lungs all at the same time in your cardio efforts. For example, you choose to do movements like kettlebell swing and rowing because these movements occur in a cyclical fashion, allowing you to learn how to coordinate your breathing and muscle contractions when doing them. Compare that to doing heavy deadlifts and strict pull-ups. That would be very difficult to cycle in a fashion that would promote aerobic training. These are the principles we use to build out the vast majority of our persist conditioning formats. Needless to say, I'm a big fan of all forms of cardio. And if your goal is to simply look good and move well, then I encourage you to include 150 minutes of cardio a week. What that ends up looking like is 30 minutes of cardio five days per week. The good news is that several days of functional bodybuilding training a week have approximately 30 minutes of conditioning built into the training. But what about the sports side of the coin? What does it take to build an elite engine? People love to talk about the legendary female CrossFit Games athlete, Sam Briggs, who has the nickname, The Engine. She seemed to never get tired. She could just keep going and going at a very high effort and it looks effortless sometimes. It's like she had her own engine inside of her that is constantly fueled and never runs out of gas. And you wanna know how to build an engine like that. It is wrongly assumed that in order to build and achieve an elite engine like that, you have to suffer constantly in training. This misconception sends athletes scouring the internet for the next blood burning aerobic capacity template that sends them into the pain cave three to five days per week. If they survive past the first week and complete the program, they will get better at tolerating pain and discomfort, but ultimately they won't progress their aerobic abilities very much at all. Why is that? Because building an elite engine has to follow the same principles as FBB cardio. It must be sustainable, low complexity, cyclical. The one key addition here is that it must also be progressive. Progression means developing gradually and in stages of volume and intensity. Each and every week, there must be purposeful progression built into your cardio training formats. You need to see a purposeful increase in the volume of work week after week. Every few weeks, you would increase the intensity, the speed, or the pace of your work 
proportionate to your abilities, never increasing it so much that the work becomes unsustainable. Let's take an example of how you progress your rowing. You set a 2K time trial pace and you work from there. Then you're going to add just two seconds to your average pace and row 500 meters, rest for two minutes, and in the first week, do eight sets. Then the next week, you'll do 10 sets. The week after that, you'll do 12 sets and add a couple more minutes of rest between the first and maybe the second half of the workout. You keep the same pace, just adding a couple sets per week for four weeks in a row. You're at 14 sets by now. Then at that point, you bump your pace back by two seconds and you bring your sets back down to 10 and progress from there. Sounds simple, right? Pretty low complexity, I'd say. Some might say it looks super boring, and I can completely understand that. But this is what it takes to build elite aerobic capacity. It isn't sexy, and it isn't always fun. Furthermore, it takes time. To build volume week after week, you need to dedicate more minutes, more hours, longer sessions, and more sets. Cardio is aerobic training. And when done correctly, you can reap a ton of benefits. While building an engine takes large amounts of dedication and adherence to the plan, having good aerobic capacity is very attainable. Simply leverage our Persist programs and supplement with a couple of cardio sessions to reap all the benefits of better sleep, better energy utilization, and improved body composition and more.